Is it unprofessional to go to other people's studios covered in dog fur? Anyway, I'm really excited because today I finally get to go see my friend Thomas and his epic home studio, which is in a garage. I've been to a couple garage conversions. You've seen 601 and Ben Reno's. If you haven't checked those out, those are cool. But Thomas really took advantage of all of the space. I've seen his stuff on Instagram and it looks really, really cool. So Thomas, thank you for having me out. I'm gonna put all of his links to his Instagram, the studio's Instagram website down in the description. Go give Thomas a follow. Ask him whatever questions you have down in the comments about the build. Let me know what you like about this. If you have done something similar, all the questions down in the comments. Really excited to go check it out. He also has a Tesla, which is so sick. I'm also thinking about doing a little bit of a redesign up here. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing how we do that. Still deciding on that. Oh, look at that. Speaking of Sweetwater, this video is actually brought to you by Sweetwater. Oh yeah. So since we're talking about Epic Studios, home studios, gear, Sweetwater is the number one online retailer for pro audio and music instruments. I actually just got this SSL UF8 from Sweetwater. Video on that coming this Wednesday or Thursday, so make sure you're subscribed to be able to see that. Amazing customer service warranties. They have the 55 point guitar inspection, which I had mentioned before is so ridiculous. Also thinking about getting a new guitar. Every time you make a purchase with them, you have your own sales engineer who follows through with you after you get it to make sure everything went smoothly, you got it on time and that it's actually working. Love that accountability. I love Sweetwater. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. If you have any question on any of the gear I'm using in here or maybe some of the gear from the videos, check the description of this video. I do put affiliate links. If you want to pick up any of that gear you can get, it takes you right to Sweetwater. Also supports this channel. Thank you Sweetwater and thank you guys for watching and smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's go check out Thomas's Epic Home Studio called The Planetarium. The whole thing is in this garage. Yeah. When did you get this property? Uh, 2016. The garage was already here, but it was totally unfinished. So just concrete floor. Yeah, like there was wood frame, exterior, an attic with like a nine foot ceiling. It was pretty low. When, after moving in, did you start tearing it apart and putting this together? So we started in like late 2017. It was finished in the middle of 2018. So about three years ago now. Did you get the house because of the garage and think you were gonna do a studio or were you kind of like trying to figure out where you wanted to do the studio and then decided to do it in the garage? So I bought the house actually from a friend of mine. One of the reasons that I wanted it was because of the garage. Originally, I was just set up in the basement of the house, which was not ideal for like roommates. And at the time, like my girlfriend, she, you know, it was loud and annoying. I kind of always thought it would take me years and years to build the studio, but luckily like I had some close friends that were like, hey, like we'll give you a loan if you want to do this. So I was like, okay, well, let's do it. I luckily had a really great designer kind of helped me, but I, I knew sort of what kind of rooms I wanted. I knew I wanted a bathroom, things like that for clients to use. Yeah. And I knew I wanted really good drum sounds. I had a rough layout and then he just kind of polished it. Who was the designer? A guy named Sean Neff. What's the square footage of this building? Do you know? It's about 750 to 800 ish. It's like 30 by 28. I mean, it just looks like a normal two car garage with a side door. Yeah, and it was like we parked our cars in here. It used to have the aluminum rolling garage door. We took the metal door out when they were framing. When they were done, they were like, well, you know, we could match the siding so that it looks nice and uniform all the way across. I was asking the contractor, I was like, well, would there be a way that we could just put like some kind of fake door? so that it looks like a garage. Okay, so let's talk about the door. You got a double door here. Yeah, double door. So the whole place is like room in a room. So there's an air gap all the way around. It was at the time pretty illegal to have a studio. I was really worried about my neighbors complaining. That was probably priority one was that we could record drums all night and yeah. that my neighbors would ever would never even know. So yeah, double doors, double walls, all that jazz. Now I wanted to point one little detail out here. You got the ring floodlights. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, obviously security lights, but they got the ring camera in them, which goes to your phone. Yeah. So when I show up, your phone gives you a little buzz and says, hey, there's some weird looking dude here with a camera outside. Yeah, totally. That and then the door lock that you have, the automatic door lock. Yeah. It's just like a standard key. I actually had, I went to Home Depot originally and got like a $200, like whatever fancy lock. And it yeah. was totally bogus. Like it 
half the time wouldn't work and like Got so this it. is yeah, just yeah. sort of like builder grade your standard cheap one but it's yeah. been way better yeah absolutely that's awesome all right cool let's check it out yeah this it looks absolutely amazing thanks man like the the shape of the room Dude, and really cool stuff in here. Where'd you get that LED light? My wife actually found that on Etsy and this guy in Ukraine makes them and he's like the nicest, sweetest guy. This is control room. What rooms are in this building? Because you've clearly divided up the space really well. Thanks, yeah. So we have the control room. There's a vocal booth slash amp booth. That's the pass through to that, which is sort of just kind of ended up being a coffee room. There's a live room that's a little bigger. It's like probably 65% of the depth of the studio. And then there's a bathroom and a storage closet, which also is wired for audio. So it can be like an amp room or whatever. It'll actually drive you crazy if you look at the floors because the boards are not oh, <laughs> straight. You know right. what I mean? It kind of feels like a square room at first, but yeah, even that front wall kind of comes to a point. Did you make the treatment or was this a part of the designer's thing or? Um, it was a sort of a collaborative Thing. I think I actually built the panels, if I'm remembering right, at least some of them. Combination, some of them are 703, some of them are rock soul. It was kind of just like, I had a bunch of insulation around and we uh, kind of used whatever made sense. So like I was saying, the ceiling used to be really low in here and there was just a truss attic that was supporting the roof actually. Mm -hmm. And it, there was like fluorescent lights sort of as a workshop vibe. Some friends actually convinced me to do the ceiling black, which I was not into at first, but I'm really glad we did because they were able to raise the ceiling, get rid of the, the truss uh, attic. And I feel like the black paint really made it look um, taller than it really is. What kind of work are you doing in here? I, and I'd sort of in phases, I, I'm, I'll either be in a cycle where I'm producing or mixing, but most days recently it's been just engineering other people's projects. Like we'll do a lot of, um, I do a lot of remote drum tracking. I do play nice. drums, but yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a pro drummer like some of my friends are, but yeah, so I'll just sort of pair up the song with a great drummer and they can listen in on the session and we'll send them files when we're done. When did you start doing this? You've got a pretty sweet collection of stuff here. Honestly, I started doing audio production like right out of high school really so yeah i've been collecting gear since since college and i've always just had it set up you know when i first moved to nashville it was just all in my apartment and then um moved into this house and it was all in the basement always with a future sort of studio in mind a couple more questions about the build yeah, what's the so, story with the window because that is a huge window <laughs> it's like a way bigger window than i thought we needed but it's been really nice to have so much sight lines because I'll track full band, full bands in there sometime and it's nice to be able to see everyone, but it had to be custom cut because it's so large, like nobody right. sells a pane of glass that large. And then you have these rails around. Was that intended for this or for curtains? Yeah, so it was intended for, th for the panels to be sort of modular. This was a genius idea by my designer, Sean. We, we wanted to find a way to get the panels away from the wall a little bit. We were trying to figure out a way and he was like, what if we made these cool like iron rods and hung them? Then we kind of did the rest of the room partially for aesthetics to finish out the look because I just think the iron thing looks, looks sick, cool. Yeah. Do you know the dimensions of each room like this room? This is a total guess and the dimensions are super weird because the walls are splayed. But I think in the center of this room, it's like 13 wide. 18 long. It's one of the like golden yeah. ratio wow, kind of volume great. things. Yeah. First off, what desk is this? This is made by Argosy specifically for that console, which is a Soundcraft Ghost console from the 90s, which is like kind of a, an interesting piece of gear, but like people who know about this console swear by them. Um, and, and I love it a lot. It's really flexible console. I predominantly use the console for monitoring, like during a full band session. You got the sweet audio accessories, patch bays. Yeah, we definitely overbuilt the patch bays, but it, this is so nerdy, but patch bays are one of my favorite parts of audio gear. I just think it's, I, I for a long time had to crawl around and like plug a mic into the back of the yeah. thing and you know, whatever I wanted to use and being able to just like patch feels so satisfying. Okay, so what compute, oh, is that the Mac mini? Yeah, Mac mini, a um, couple years old, you know, fully loaded. Um, you got the nice Apple display. Yeah, cinema display. Those are kind of hard to find now. 
And then uh, the interfaces. I'm using two Apollo 16s. One's a little older, one's the newer one. No onboard pre's, but it's 32, 32 in, 32 out. And then what? what's the headphone system you're using? I use a Hearback. I have the like old school oh, that's right. Hearback. Yeah, that's it's been a cool thing. It's got eight channels and you can link channels three through eight to be stereo. All right, and then what kind of, what, what, what pre's are you using over here? I've got some Vintec 473 like Neve clones. So there's four channels in this? Yeah, this is four channel. So I first bought the single channel 500 series, the 573, and I was really digging it. So I was like, I'll buy four of these, and I did. And then same thing with this daking. I had the single channel daking. I just really loved it. And so I bought four of those, which is the daking mic pre four. These are actually really great. These are old school. Oh um, yeah, yeah, I've used those. Yeah, Bryn Avril APIs. I love them on kick and snare. Nice. You can see it says made from vintage API components. I think they're API transformers. Dude, this, Germanium Pre is so cool, especially on bass. It has this like feedback knob that's not necessarily mm -hmm. what you think it is. Like I thought it was just gonna be like output gain. Yeah. But it it's doing some kind of like harmonic distortion when you turn it up. The Pacifica, that's really great. That's two channels of essentially like a quad eight pre clone. So quad eight was one of the main console makers like in the seventies. So is that 12 or uh, 14? Let's see, when well, I have the Alltech too, let's see, that's oh, okay. four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 16. 16 outboard pre's, um, and then I have the console as well. Okay, and then you got some compressors in there too. Yeah, these are just a couple of like DBX 560s. I think it's the 500 version of the 160s, which are not like, Mind blowing, but they, they right. compress really well. And I have a pair of these uh, Yuri LA4s from the 70s actually, I got them on Craigslist. Nice. And I love those on like a vocal or um, anything that you want to be a little slower. It's kind of like, I like to say it's like an LA2A with yeah. a uh, ratio selector. So you can go like, oh, I think cool. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. two, four, eight or 20 maybe. Soundcraft power supply. This is sort of like a little hub for if you're doing DI stuff or? Um, so that is a little ring. patch panel that goes to all my, I have a bunch of instrument cable and speaker cable running the walls. Yeah, that's how I can sort of access all the different instrument cables, speaker cables. And then you've got the, the artist mix here. I mainly use that um, just for automation when I'm mixing, but it's really great for that. You know, you have eight channels. I'm typically only using maybe three or four faders at once. How long have you had these? Uh, I actually bought these from a guy downtown Nashville when I first moved here in 2011. They're great, man. They're actually all I've ever used in any studio like i went what? to a school that had them and then i got a job at a studio that had them and so i moved here and i got my own and it's it just sounds like nothing to me it just sounds like music okay and then you got some other stuff over here with this little tape guy it's a four track you know cassette machine i feel like these are getting more popular lately but i have some secret tricks i love to do for drums i mean i could take the tape out like it's not a tape thing uh -huh. and these channels just sound like really cool distortion pedals if you right. dime them. So like I'll run a kick into one and a snare into two and literally, you know, bring the faders down and sort of dime the pre's. It's just this really cool lo-fi distortion on the kick and snare that can sound cool if you're going for the like Tame punchy. Impala, like oh, yeah. sort of punchy lo-fi thing. It's honestly <laughs> just really fun to mess around with. Like there's a lot of weird sounds you can get out of it. And and what are you using this on? I use that on a lot of stuff. I, I haven't had this very long. This is really cool if we're making like, if we want, if we're making like a 70s inspired, you know, drum thing or acoustic guitar thing. And it has, it's three heads so you can monitor it, you know, back in real time. And then you've got this uh, little, what, what is this? People call that the Bogue. It's, uh, oh, okay. it's the Behringer version of the Moog Model D. And honestly, man, sounds just like the real thing. What are you kind of using that on? Keys and stuff? Any or? synth bass. It's a monophonic synth. Oh, okay. synth yeah. Synth. So like if I'm producing some kind of like pop inspired thing, like it's definitely the first thing I reach for over a plugin for synth bass. It just sounds way better. And then you got some little knickknacks down here. Are you a, are you a Predators fan? I'm a Predators fan, yeah. But I, I'm like not weird about it. I'll be your friend if you're not, but. And then this little tail, this is cool. Oh yeah, I found this at the uh, Nashville flea market. They have like on Sundays once a month or whatever. Some Seinfeld on top. Yeah. Good move. Yeah. Good rug. You find this Thanks. rug there too? Oh man, honestly, maybe one of my favorite things about the studio. It's just like really cozy. 
All right. Uh, is that something that you use often? Is that like a, the MIDI controller? The MIDI keyboard? This one's really crappy. I have a better one that's like weighted. The one I use is the uh, Arturia Keylab 88. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I can show you. It's kind of over here leaning against the wall. I Because the control room is so small, I try to keep the keys put away until I need them. Sure. Okay, so this is your sound lock essentially totally. coffee room. Exactly, yeah. My wife got me this really cool bar car and it's just like a good place to oh, kind of that is cool. keep all the pretzels and coffee and stuff like that. And then you've got the Polaroids. Oh yeah, I like to take random That's Polaroids cool. of people that come through and yeah, I have a bunch more that I still need to put up, but. So here's the Arturia. The key bed on these is like super high quality. The, the, nice, the weighting yeah. of these keys feels really amazing. For piano, it's terrible when you're trying to do like an organ part or something. Yeah. And it's super weighted. So I'll use the other one because it's not weighted at all. Okay. And then there's another room here. Yeah. This is like a little vocal booth. Usually I like to put a vocalist not in here though. I like if, especially if they're by themselves, sure. I like to put them in the main room. Just there's a little more comfort level. If I have a full band going, I'll put the singer in here and sometimes you know we may end up keeping the vocal got some panels in here yeah the lights i love the consistency of the lights throughout the whole spot thanks man yeah they're all phillips hues so you can like change oh. the color and kind of get weird here should i do that i like to go red in here now, it's really cool if you're like doing a vocal or whatever okay let's go check out that all right let's room. do it this is seriously one of my favorite live rooms. Thanks, man. I can't, it's really hard to believe that this was all just a garage. <laughs> Truly, I feel the same way. Like, I can't believe that I used to have my car in here and like spiders, <laughs> which sometimes maybe there space. are still spiders. But <laughs> these six panels were all black, just sort of like the back of the control room. I had this friend, Bex, and she's an artist. She's a musical artist, but she's also like a painter. She's also a poet. She's just like a really artistic, amazing person. And I was like, what if we did new fabric on these um, panels? And what if you painted some sort of like planetarium mm. design? And so she fully like made this like really cool geometric thing that sort of is like constellation-y, minimalistic. Um, and she crushed it. I think it looks so cool. It, it just kind of made it feel bigger and like brighter and yeah, I walk in here in the morning and I'm still not used to it. So I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. One thing I just noticed when I walked over here is AC blowing on my face. Oh, dude. It's so- I can't believe we haven't talked about this yet. The designer was like, I got you on AC. We're gonna use a mini split, which is one of those things yeah. you see like in the Outside. thing. So you can see this chase in here. This is like the final duct. There's three ducts coming out of the mini split. The thing itself is rated, I think, down to like, it's like the Whisper Quiet Fujitsu model or whatever, it's like 30 dBA. They framed this out with wood, you know, and they put the duct, which is oversized, it's like 18 inches, and then they stuffed that whole frame with rock soul to like really seal it, and then they obviously drywalled it. So yeah, you can, I mean, there's air blowing out of this and it's literally like silent. Is that a great, w w Rogers? Yeah, this is an old Rogers kit. This is a friend of mine's, but um, it's kind of like a permanent loan situation. He comes over and does a lot of remote tracking here. And then uh, a Yamaha snare? Yeah, that's like a Maple Custom snare. That's also my buddy Jared's. And then you got all these other kits up top. Are these all yours? Uh, yeah, well, except for those Gretsch Toms. Those are my buddy Jared's, but these black Ludwigs are really cool. That finish is like a black matte vinyl. It's oh. called Black Panther, which is just an amazing yes. name. It's really cool. That kick drum specifically is like my favorite rock bass drum ever. Oh, cool. It's like big 22. and- 22. Yeah, it's a 22 and it's really, it has the fiber skin head, which makes it just really mm. subby. And then this other kit is really interesting. It's a 30s Slingerland kit. Ow. It's got the marble wrap, which is just cool. The bass drum, like that calfskin head on the bass drum is the original 30s head. Oh yeah. And you can still see the stamp, Radio King on the front. It's definitely not like a kit that you would hear on a modern record, but whenever it's like, oh, what if we did a cool percussion kit that's like really boppy and resonant, we pull that down and it's really, really fun. I like the, the side table here, it's uh, killer. When you have a studio and a wife, a lot of times you inherit things from your house that your wife no longer wants. Yeah. And that's true. honestly from Target, I think. But she was like, hey, we don't really have a spot for this. And I'm like, I'll put it by my drum throne. 
All right, so down here in the panel, I can see you've got the Ethernet, XLRs. Yep. Yeah, the Hearbacks just, just use setup. one Ethernet port, which is like super awesome and it powers and everything. And then a bunch of snares up here. Yeah, these are some, I honestly don't even know everything about these. I know this is like a really cool CNC. This one is a Yamaha, I think, vintage yep. shop. That one, uh, that's that oh, metal is that drum a Tama? is a Tama. I used to have that. Yeah, it's like a 13, I think. Yeah, it's really that cool. thing pops. Yeah, it's cool. And then um, this is a really deep wood snare. I actually don't know who makes that one, but I feel like that ends up being the snare we use a lot. Where'd you get this piano? This is cool. It was my grandmother's actually. She was a church oh, pianist. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my mom, actually, when I moved into this house, like, put it on a trailer and brought it from Texas, which is where I'm from. So it's really good playability. Yeah. It's like the action on it's really good. You've got over here, you've got a bathroom. Yeah, that's that was super important. I think anyone watching this who has a studio understands the importance of having a bathroom in the studio. I like the shelves too. Did what was that an initial plan or was that kind of an after? That was an design? initial plan. I, I knew that I wanted to have a lot of drums out here and I'm actually right now about to buy another drum set. There's just always been a ton of drums out here. Honestly, I found these brackets on Amazon. They're rated for like a thousand pounds or something. And then I just got the lumber and put them Are these Coles? Coles on ultimate stands? Damn, Honestly, the, the, the stands make it because the the where where you want these are heavy on your yeah they're very heavy and where you want them on your drums is up high and you just can't do that with like a, no. a guitar center boom stand okay and then uh guitar land over here yeah this is like um, acoustic if we're guitar, doing vocal. yeah acoustic guitar vocal whatever and like i said i'll normally like probably bring one of these ultimate stands over here if we're doing that it, it's kind of nice because this is Per, this station purposefully doesn't have a sight line to me at the computer. Yeah. So like if a vocalist is in their feelings over here, they can do that and not feel like I'm staring at them as they're singing, you know? Sweet, and then you have this great cl gear closet back here. Yeah, man, it is like Holy stuffed cow. right now. It's all about the shelves, honestly. Real quick, let's run through some of your, let's just go through some of your favorite. I, obviously I see you have a ton of mics in here. What are yeah. some of your favorites that you have? Well, I definitely use the coals on a ton of stuff. Some of my favorite condensers are in the boxes, so they're hard to see, but I have the U87. I've got the 414 from the 80s. That's the TL2. Oh yeah. This is the 87? That's the 87, yeah. 414. 414. KSM32s are cool. I have a pair of those for really cool for room mics and stuff like that. SM7s, I love on drums. I love, this is gonna be sound crazy, but I have that little weird EV mic and it's a 635. It's actually an omnidirectional dynamic mic, but it's really cool on like a snare bottom or as like a kit mic. Right. I have these really cool mics you may have heard of called SM57s, 58s. 421s are cool on toms. I That's pretty much my go-to on toms. All kinds of fun stuff in there. Let's imagine I want to record here. Yeah. How can I get in touch with you and what's the process like of book and time. It kind of depends on what you want to do. The process for getting in touch with me is on Instagram, just Thomas Doolin. I'm on, I'm on Instagram. D-U-L-I-N? D-U-L-I-N. Okay. I also have a studio Instagram that I probably just don't update enough, but it's the planetarium, one word. I'm also, I have a website, thomasdoolin.com, which has a, email. you can email me there. If you want to come here, I have like pretty affordable day rates if you wanted to like come here do in person yeah. but i also do a ton of just song rates if you want to send me something that you want drums on and like i said i partner with just a ton of great drummers cool man well thank you so much for having me this was super fun dude it was fun hanging with you and, yeah and after like you're done shooting like i have a lot of questions for you as well so cool thanks, thanks for coming and hanging all right let's go drive around in the tesla let's and, do it and talk let's do it <laughs> all right see ya